Hey everyone, it's me Pratima. So Android 15, also known as Android Vanilla Ice Cream is here, sort of. There's still a few more months left before its stable public release, but I've been testing the better version of the Android 15 on my Pixel 8 for about a week to find out exactly what's new and what's improved. Now, you have to know that Google has not made any major visual changes here compared to the Android 14, but there are a ton of improvements when it comes to features. So in this video, I will talk about seven of the most useful and interesting new features that I absolutely love on the Android 15. And if you stick around till the end of this video, I will tell you a bunch of bonus features that you will love even more. Let's go. Okay, so one of the features that I have absolutely loved is called private space. It's basically this separate hidden space where you can store all your private sensitive apps so that these apps don't show up in the app drawer or anywhere else, not even in the notifications or the recent apps menu, nowhere. I know this is not something new and we've seen similar features built in in Samsung, Xiaomi and OnePlus devices too and there are a dozen of apps in the Play Store for the same purpose as well but to get it built in on Android is neat. Also, Google has made it a bit more interesting. It's just not private space. It's actually kind of a separate user profile of its own. Here, you can have a different Google account and even have two versions of the same app at once, one in your regular app drawer and the other in private space. You can also set a different authentication style, uh, that is fingerprint, pattern, or pin to access the private space other than your phone's regular authentication. So even if someone figures out your phone's password, they will not be able to access your hidden apps at least. On that note, screen recording is getting a lot more private on Android 15 too. Uh, you know how when you are trying to screen record something and you get a notification from some other app or you accidentally switch to a different app that you don't want in the recording and you have to start recording once again? Well, Android 15 has a genius solution for this. Instead of recording the entire screen, you can now choose to record what happens inside one app only. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll just select screen record from the quick settings option and then select the single app option and then start recording. Uh, let's choose Chrome for now. So I'm scrolling Chrome and the screen recording is recording the same but uh, even if I jump to a different app or if there's a pop-up notification from a different app, the screen recording will only record what's happening on Chrome and that's it. All right, next. Google is also pushing for easier multitasking on Android 15 with app pairs. And if you're someone who's constantly working with two apps in split screen mode, then this is probably the most exciting feature that you should look forward to. So instead of separately opening those apps that you use side by side every single time, there's now an option to save them as a pair for much quicker access. Just tap the app pair shortcut and voila. Although, like private space, this one's nothing new either. I've been launching YouTube and notes with one click on my Samsung phone for as long as I can remember. All right, the next Android 15 feature I want to talk about is kind of a personal favorite of mine. Uh, it's called app archiving. So if your phone is running low on storage, this can be very helpful. Let me give you an example. For instance, I don't want to keep Instagram on my phone right now. You can see I have logged into my account and everything and it's taking 556 MB on my phone right now. Once I archive it like so, that number reduces down to 139 MB. But later, if I decide to install Instagram again, I will just do this and restore the app. And after restoring, I will not need to sign in again. My data will still be there. It will be like temporarily disabling an app. Moving on, notification cooldown is another new feature on Android 15 that I cannot wait for you guys to try out. Especially if you have that one friend who keeps your phone ringing and buzzing with constant notifications in the group chat or that one app that spams you with notifications the second you're connected to the internet. But thanks to Android 15, I can finally enjoy some peace and quiet by enabling notification cooldown. What it does is gradually lower the volume of all the successive notifications from the same app and I can either apply this to every type of notification or just for those noisy group chats. Although right now, Google does not let you choose specific apps to put into cooldown, which would have been very helpful. You can only select a group of apps for now, but let me once again remind you that I'm running a better version of the Android 15 at the moment. So 
Google has plenty of time to make some revisions for the stable version. Anyway, have you guys heard of AuraCast? It's this new Bluetooth LE audio feature that lets you broadcast audio from your smartphones and laptops to multiple devices at once. Unlike how traditional Bluetooth connection can only stream to one device at a time. Uh, Samsung was actually the first to bring Oraka support with the One UI 6.1, whereas Google now allows you to be able to share your phone's audio or join others' broadcasts much more easily on Android 15. Say I'm somewhere crowded and want to watch the latest episode of One Piece with my buddies. With Android 15, I can start sharing audio from my phone while my friends join in with their wireless earbuds. And the beauty of AuraCast is that my friends don't need to go through the hassle of manually pairing their earbuds to my phone as well. It will work just like how personal hotspot works. Okay, so I saved the best Android 15 feature for last because this one can potentially keep your phone's data safe in case it's stolen. Google calls it theft detection lock and listen to this. It uses data from sensors like accelerometer and gyroscope to figure out if your phone has been snatched away. And with a little help from AI, it will quickly lock the device to prevent thieves from accessing your phone. That's not all, there's also this new feature that will automatically lock the phone if the thief puts your device offline, while Google now lets you remotely lock your phone at android.com slash lock with the help of your phone number and security question too. But the best part is that all of these are coming to older phones as well running Android 10 or later. Except for factory reset protection which prevents the thief from resetting stolen phones without your Google account credentials. That's going to be exclusive to Android 15. Alright, so those were the 7 incredible new features I found on Android 15. And as promised, I'll now go through a bunch of other changes and upgrades you can expect from Google's next major Android release. It's going to be rapid fire, so brace yourselves. So I know I said there aren't many visual changes this time, but Google has made a couple of refreshes to the UI here and there. For example, the volume panel has been completely redesigned with big bubbly controls that look a lot nicer. The Bluetooth tile now opens up a pop-up menu on a single press instead of just turning on and off. And if you dig a little deeper into the settings, you will find that Android 15 now has the option to automatically turn on Bluetooth the next day, just like on iOS. Next up, Google is finally bringing predictive back gestures into Android as well, which gives this nice preview of where you're returning to. This feature was already there on Android 14, buried deep inside developer options, but it's now going to be enabled by default on Android 15. Android 15 can also stop you from making calls and messages in an unencrypted network to prevent data theft and surveillance. Then there's this new high quality mode when using your phone with a USB webcam. Although I should warn you that enabling it could mean the phone gets hotter and loses battery more quickly. Whereas Android 15 has a ton of under the hood optimizations like better standby battery life and a built in AV1 decoder for an even better user experience. So yeah, with Android 15, it's clear that Google is mainly focused on productivity, security and stability side of things more than anything else. And if you can't wait for the final release, you can actually install the Android 15 beta right away. I will put down the link in the description, but you have to know that you will need one of these devices. Although I won't recommend running beta software on your daily driver since, well, it's beta software and hence not stable enough. But if you have a secondary device and want to try it, go ahead. So everybody, that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notifications icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.